thank you for coming. I'm very excited that uh, Monerocon is in Paralni Polis uh, uh, this year, uh, as especially uh, as uh, uh, Institute of Crypto Anarchy is something that is written on this uh, um, uh, on the on this building. So. Um, what we are trying to do, what we are trying to do here is uh, to build parallel societies and to implement this thing called crypto anarchy. Um, and uh, maybe if you go around this place, you will see many projects uh, for, the, for the 10 years that this place has been operating, almost 10 years. Um, what I want to answer here is, okay, we have a... a we all want freedom, that is something, uh, or liberty, that is something that uh, we have uh, common with all the people that uh, are in this place and uh, uh, come here, attend here. Uh, it is also common with most Monero people. When you go to Monero conferences, uh, they don't care that much about number go up and uh, all these things. Uh, uh, these people usually are uh, uh, in this uh, field, interested in this uh, because of freedom or privacy. Uh, I want to connect these things together. So uh, the first question is, how, uh, does, uh, how do this technology actually bring us more freedom? You know, because we have these command line utilities that uh, encrypt documents and we can send private money, but okay, how does it relate to me having uh, more freedom uh, in this world and uh, um, how, how does the philosophy of crypto anarchy uh, or strategy uh, of crypto anarchy work? So uh, compared to other philosophies uh, uh, that uh, are aiming uh, for freedom, uh, crypto anarchy is not uh, uh, something that needs to be implemented in the future. You can actually use all the benefits today and uh, it's uh, kind of designed to uh, work in an adversarial environment where around us is something called the state, that, that's the organization that builds the roads. Um, so, uh, first of all, if we want to optimize something, um, it's a good idea to uh, define it somehow, and there are many definitions of uh, freedom or liberty. Um, if you are a libertarian, uh, you uh, know about something that is called uh, non-aggression non principle, uh, which is an absence of coercive force, uh, allowing individuals to live their lives uh, freely without interference. Um, this definition is nice, I like it, uh, but it's very hard to uh, optimize for because it is based on them doing, or in this case, not doing something to you. Uh, so uh, how, do you, how do you optimize, you know, the, okay, you can move your body to uh, some place where they uh, want to coerce you less, uh, but there is no direct action that you can do to uh, uh, make this happen today. So again, crypto anarchy is not some uh, future philosophy when, you know, we finally dismantle the state in uh, 50 years or 100 years, uh, we want to uh, enjoy our freedom today. Uh, so uh, there are two parts uh, of, um, uh, of this coercive force, uh, which are represented by this image. This is generated by Midjourney, but maybe you have seen a, a variation of this image on uh, those uh, papers with uh, American dead presidents. Uh, they're called US dollars. Uh, they also have this symbol uh, there, and uh, it's, uh, it's an eye in the pyramid. Uh, the eye, the uh, all-seeing eye, represents uh, surveillance, and the pyramid uh, symbolizes hierarchy. So we need to tackle these two things if we want to avoid this coercive force. So uh, if we do all these things that I mentioned here, you know, reform effort, talking, Twitter, pissing contests, uh, now apparently Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are going to have a, like a cage fight. Uh, so these are uh, very uh, funny uh, things that can waste a lot of our time. 
uh, protesting, writing manifestos, all this is cool, uh, but this doesn't lead to more freedom today. <laughs> um, so we are looking for something to do, some, some action that we can do today, not some philosophy written in a book. Uh, uh, and so we don't necessarily need to win like a Twitter fight with some statist and uh, explain them who would build the roads. Uh, so we have uh, uh, two levels of, uh, of this. Uh, first level uh, explains the surveillance part and it answers the question, why does crypto anarchy work? So first of all, uh, the most grave uh, um, limitation of your freedom is if, you, if someone finds your body and moves it to a jail cell or a prison cell. Uh, so only human bodies can be put in jail. You cannot uh, jail a Twitter handle uh, unless uh, the, the right body can be assigned. So the identity of your body can be connected uh, to, uh, to the action online. Um, in crypto anarchy, uh, it is a strategy, not uh, so much a philosophy, uh, to prevent conflicts also with the state, but not necessarily only with the state, uh, by using all these modern technologies, cryptography, anonymization, electronic cash, and so on. Um, when you uh, learn about other, um, other ways uh, or, or other freedom theories of, you know, anarcho-capitalism or even like the left uh, left wing versions anarcho communism and so on uh, they're based on the premise of winning conflicts you know we will you know go fight the state and then it will disappear and we will win and that's uh, that's how we get our freedom um, with crypto anarchy the basic approach is not to start the conflict in the first place uh, and we have a uh, very good uh, uh, very good uh, tools uh, to do that um, how does it work? Uh, when we talk um, about conflicts, there is a concept uh, in a, a military uh, conflict theory, which is called an OODA loop. Uh, OODA loop uh, is something that both sides of the conflict uh, do uh, in, a, in a loop. So uh, the first part of the loop is observe. So I observe something. Okay, I look outside and I see, oh, there is a Russian tank. I observe something. Uh, then I need to orient myself, okay, what does this mean? Uh, is it going towards me? Is it going away? Does it look hostile? Uh, you know, uh, will it fire or is it asking for help? Or like, we need to understand what is it. So that's the orient part. Um, then we need to decide what to do. Okay, do I run away? Do I go uh, to Bordel, to the basement? Or, you know, do I do nothing because uh, it looks uh, okay? And then we act, so, so we decide to go somewhere. Uh, let's take an, uh, another example, which is um, really telling, which is, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, drug market or weed markets. Uh, so most people who want to legalize weed, uh, they go to the decide part. You know, there's a, either a policeman or a judge, and they're deciding if they're going to put me into, the, into jail. And decriminalization and legalization of weed uh, aim to change this decide part. Okay, the policeman will decide differently, so decide not to find me and not to put, put me in jail and not to take my wheat. <laughs> or uh, legalization movement, okay, we go to the parliament and we change the rule, how they decide what to do with people who are either um, uh, uh, in possession of wheat or uh, are even selling it. Uh, with crypto anarchy, uh, we go to the first two parts. So first, uh, make sure you are not observed with wheat uh, or trading wheat or something like this. And if you are, uh, still might not be a problem, make sure that uh, the potential uh, uh, party who, who you are in conflict with doesn't understand it. So in this case, uh, a good example would be, uh, would be um, how drugs are sold in East, in Ukraine, uh, in, uh, uh, in Russia, and uh, in these um, uh, Eastern countries. Uh, it's basically a crypto anarchy strategy. It's called drop gangs. So basically you order a bag of weed or whatever, cocaine, what, whatever you want, uh, usually through Telegram or some, some other channel. Uh, 
and they uh, then they tell you um, how you pay. So you can pay usually by cryptocurrency or uh, by giving cash to someone. And then you will receive coordinates where your product is. So there is so the observe part. No one can observe anyone giving you a package. So they they break it. Uh, they stop it at the observe part. Uh, and if they somehow figure out what is happening, they have never seen the sale. So what they actually observe is you going to a park bench and taking a bag of wheat. So that's very different than actually um, dealing with the wheat. So crypto anarchy tries to stop the conflict uh, in the first two parts of the, of the OODA loop. And when it stops, it doesn't go uh, further. So that's uh, how it works. Uh, and a key part of this is uh, privacy. So uh, the way not to be observed is uh, if you keep your privacy, then it's very hard to observe you. So that's what we, uh, uh, that's what we use all these fancy technologies for. I uh, like the word anonymity more because privacy is, you know, um, kind of overblown, everyone is talking about rights to privacy and uh, all these bullshit laws and so on. Uh, but these things don't uh, deliver uh, uh, this breaking of the, of the conflict or stopping the, uh, of the conflict in the first part. Uh, so, yeah, if uh, I need to give a cons consent to process my personal information every time I, I interact with the stupid GDPR whatever form, uh, it doesn't really give, give me privacy, just uh, clarifies the terms of the interaction. Um, but what we want to do is we want to decouple uh, our actions or part of our property from our physical bodies or identities that lead to our physical bodies. So that's how it, uh, how it works. So privacy uh, is the power to selectively reveal oneself to the world. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's uh, one of the good definitions, um, and I think we should have we should also be able to selectively choose anonymity, not only privacy but full anonymity. Uh, so when we have this privacy, it leads directly to more freedom because uh, then uh, the action or property is uh, uh, decoupled from our body, so we uh, we get a non-jailable body. Um, but then it also, of course, limits some of your choices. Choices, So you cannot do everything like you used to. So that's why I say it's an action you need to do. It's not you know, uh, something that uh, when you install a Monero wallet, you will magically have this uh, freedom. Uh, so uh, how, to, uh, how to do it? Well, if we talk about anonymity, um, it's a much better goal because we can evaluate if we achieved it. You know, if you are an author of a, of a book, you know if you are anonymous or not. You know, if, you're, uh, uh, if your identity has been revealed, then you are not anonymous. So we can, uh, it's easier to evaluate than privacy because privacy is kind of this cloudy, shady thing. Oh, I have graphene and uh, uh, proton mail and uh, whatever super secret email address. But the question is, can your actions or your property be assigned to your identity? And uh, if you have anonymity, then uh, the answer is uh, more straightforward. So in order to do this successfully, we need to understand uh, how does the surveillance uh, work. Um, and we need to understand uh, how the state sees the world. This is a really good book. I highly recommend uh, reading it. And it is about the emergence of uh, identities, uh, but not only of uh, identities of humans, but also property. So how, uh, how are street names created? How, wh why people uh, have sure names? Uh, so that, that's actually a quite nice story uh, from Flo Florence when they tried to, try to uh, introduce official names. Uh, people started to name their children the same. Uh, because less heads in a family meant less taxes. So there would be like uh, five Uri Bednars if they were all boys, <laughs> and all the siblings would have the same official name uh, just uh, to be able to say, okay, I already paid the taxes, what, what do you mean? And they would pay for one head. One head. And that, it was quite a revolt, they didn't like it. 
Um, also, uh, with, uh, with property, it's the same thing. If you have a field uh, um, and it's written in your name, then you should pay, you know, whatever it was, 10% to the church, 10% to the state. Uh, if no one knows whose field it is, then uh, no one knows who, uh, who should pay the taxes. So in modern current world, um, we need to understand what the state sees, how the state sees the wor uh, world. Uh, we need to understand how reporting works. Um, and uh, um, um, so that involves several strategies. One of them is, of course, do not put any important information on a blockchain. Um, uh, I think this uh, cultural push for transparency uh, is quite evil. You know, these hipster companies, uh, they, uh, they try to say, oh, we are fully transparent, here are our finances and so on. And uh, it looks like a virtue and we should, uh, we should completely reject it and uh, understand what, what it actually means. You know, we are, we are doing private affairs, it doesn't matter if it's a company and we should be transparent uh, to the owners, but not to the public. Um, uh, what is interesting also in this book uh, is that they realized that uh, nomads, uh, uh, with, the, with the creation of the first states, uh, by the way, the guy also wrote uh, a really good book, how first uh, states emerged, and uh, that it was basically a um, uh, gang of uh, thieves that uh, kind of uh, forced people to live uh, uh, on, a, um, on a piece of land and then harvest their production. Uh, and then they tried to gain more, uh, more legitimacy. Uh, but what is Im interesting, uh, if you are not attached to a land, uh, because uh, the jurisdictions are usually based on land, um, then... Uh, um, then it's much harder for the state to see what you're doing. You know, if you are a tourist in Thailand, uh, no one in Thailand thinks you should be paying an income tax. You're just uh, visiting, you know, so you're paying like local consumption taxes, but uh, other than that, uh, they leave you alone. So um, nomads also in history, not only today, have been uh, uh, the most free people because they were not attached to a, to a ruler. And uh, our strategy can make use of this and we can uh, travel or nomad to the cipher sphere. So what, how does it look like? Um, so uh, we should be seen by the state as super unproductive uh, backpackers. Maybe you have met them, you know, the guys with a huge backpack, they're traveling the world, enjoying um, their lives. I was one of them. Um, and uh, we should be seen as these people, you know. Uh, we are definitely not productive, not employed, you know. We are just uh, poor guys with dreadlocks and joints and, uh, you know, uh, looking for the next best uh, sunset uh, and uh, best coffee wherever we are. Uh, we are, uh, uh, it's best to be seen as living of savings uh, or parents' credit card. That wouldn't work for me, I'm too old for that, but... Uh, um, uh, definitely, you know, uh, not seen as making any money. Uh, you can use loans. Um, uh, then uh, uh, they should understand when they either look at you or look at your uh, footprint of what you're doing. Um, you should basically, uh, they should basically understand that they will never get any tax money out of you. You know, you are poor, you smell bad, uh, you don't have income, you don't have savings, definitely not real estate, you're pure burden on society, pure consumer, and uh, you live somewhere else. That's basically uh, the idea. So the business case uh, for, uh, for tax enforcer and for tax office uh, should be that they are going to waste a lot of time with you, they are go you, you should be quite a complicated case and in the end they will not get anything and that means no year and bonus and uh, then they should move over to uh, enforcement of uh, their, uh, uh, their collection and uh, fulfillment of their KPIs uh, to some uh, much easier cases. Uh, we need to understand though what they see actually. So they see you're uh, crossing the borders uh, with, a, with a passport. Uh, 
Not always uh, in, in EU, in the Schengen area, they probably don't see that, but uh, many countries, Austria, Germany, have license plate scanners. So if you drive your car, they will know that you crossed the, the border and they will also have the photo of the driver. Uh, that, and that's, that has been used uh, quite a lot for, uh, for tax enforcement. Um, and they see the whole of what I call the fiat world, bank accounts, exchanges, uh, declared official income, real estate ownership, stock ownership, all these things are being reported and seen. Uh, so using these privacy technologies, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, kind of block the view of the state of uh, what we are doing, decoupling our um, part of our activities and part uh, of our property, uh, from our physical body. So if we work under a pseudonym uh, in this, uh, uh, what we call the dark forest or this Galt's Galt, if you if you read Atlas Tract, uh, this cipher sphere uh, that it is possible to uh, to kind of move, move your activities there, there. If you look at many DeFi projects, for example, I've been looking at Aave, which is a, a blockchain bank uh, working as a DAO. They have uh, five billion uh, dollars under management. So it's not a, you know, it's not a small open source project. It's, a, it's an open source project, but uh, it's not a, you know, it's not a toy company. You can really have, a, have good income there, but it happens somewhere else. And you can be, you know, uh, URI27 or <laughs> whatever pseudonym you, uh, you um, uh, make for yourself. Um, and do this. Okay, but when we are not uh, seen, when we understand this and when we c c can use this, uh, there's level two, and that relates to the hierarchy uh, from, the, from the image of I in the pyramid. Uh, so most people, when they look at the hierarchy and uh, try to understand the game that is actually happening in the society, um, they make the first mistake, which is they try to look at the world from the point of view of the guy up there. I don't know who that is. Uh, I don't believe in hierarchies actually, so uh, maybe there is none. Uh, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to understand, okay, so uh, what is the game? You know, what, what will Americans do next? You know, will Putin fire a nuke? And they, they try to waste uh, uh, their time uh, by doing something that is not possible, uh, and that is uh, predicting what will happen in the world from the point of view of these people. Uh, central planning is not possible, so there is no single person that actually knows what happens. There are some goals, you know, some aspirations and so on, but uh, even on the top, it's total mess, you know, that, that there's uh, like uh, between the states and between the, uh, the people up there, it is a pure anarcho-capitalism and it's a fight, a fight of, uh, of goals and as aspirations. So we, we cannot predict it. So in order to understand the game, we need to try to look at it from uh, some other point uh, in the hierarchy. And um, if, we, if we think about it as a game, um, uh, we, uh, let's see uh, what roles can we play uh, in this game. So uh, the visible part of the game is the, an old school power dynamics uh, dominance game hierarchy. Uh, you can be a beta or submissive. So that's uh, most of people who just want to survive uh, this game with a nice quality of life. You want some privacy because uh, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to stand out. You don't want to be seen as a threat to the, uh, to the alphas. Uh, so uh, you basically kind of, uh, uh, Roam, ar uh, roam around uh, and uh, uh, switch jobs maybe and, uh, and you are kind of trying to survive the game and uh, not be seen as a, as a threat. Uh, so these betas, they don't necessarily need to go up in the hierarchy, they just want to have a good quality of life. So that's, uh, that's one way to play the game. Then there are these ones. Um, their goal is to move up in the dominance hierarchy. Uh, I don't recommend playing this, uh, uh, the, the game this way, uh, because first of all, uh, it is not what it seems. Uh, there is no org chart. <laughs> uh, uh, even uh, I, I had one on the slide. Uh, it's quite unknowable. You don't know 
who are these other people. They can come from totally different branch. So you don't know even who, who you are fighting, if you are uh, fighting for the next position uh, one level up. Um, and another thing is that uh, for alphas, uh, the reward mechanism is actually uh, rewarding the pri uh, primate brain. So uh, it's like when uh, maybe you have seen someone at a party who snorted a line of coke and then they thought that they, were, that they are the kings or queens of the world. <laughs> uh, it creates this, you know, this dopamine effect that you kind of are pumped up and uh, you are the real alpha, at least until the, uh, the effect works. Um, they're not actually kings of the world and, <laughs> and that's the same problem with alpha. You, you go up, uh, one uh, one level of hierarchy, and then uh, then you get a reward for uh, a few days, and then you say, okay, what's next? I need to <laughs> go further up and further up, and uh, this is a never-ending uh, uh, game of going up. So I don't recommend this strategy either. There's also a trap, uh, so it's a we can make the game better uh, trap. So uh, we can do that by voting or you know talking to your boss and so on. Um, and uh, it is, um, uh, fortunately, uh, hierarchies are kind of watered down. They're not, you know, uh, a master with a whip, you know, whipping you, you need to work <laughs> and uh, uh, work on the farm or these days work behind the computer and uh, code or write or something. Um, so we don't have um, even uh, so many yelling bosses. We have offices with bean bags and free hipster coffee and kombucha and meditation rooms and so on. Uh, so that's good for people who want to stay in the hierarchy. Uh, but the trap is this. Uh, if uh, we, um, uh, we, we are trying to kind of make the game better, but the premise is that we have to live in the hierarchy. Uh, but if we are uh, just making uh, the hierarchy or the, our lives in the hierarchy a bit better, we are not winning the game. We are kind of uh, trying to fine tune some small things. So how to win the game? Uh, forget the org chart and m move to something that is called a node first, uh, uh, node first operation or no, no, node first life. So you don't become a point in the org chart, you are interacting with many people. So you don't have a boss, you are not a boss to anyone, and you cooperate with people. So that's, uh, for example, a lot of uh, open source development, uh, uh, for example, in cryptocurrencies, in Monero, you know, you have contributors, you are cooperating with some people. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you uh, can solve some problem, someone, uh, someone uh, declares, uh, bounty for solving that problem. So you say, okay, I can do this, you do it, uh, you get a reward and, and you continue and you uh, live your life this way. Um, I think this is much better, definitely not for everyone. And I call this, uh, um, uh, this uh, um, role uh, gamma. Uh, so that is dropping off the radar of the dominance hierarchy. This is very important. Uh, the worst thing to do is if you switch to the, uh, this mode, this note first mode of life, and then you write to Twitter, oh, I, you know, fucked you and uh, I'm not paying taxes and now I'm free, you know? No, because then you're seen as a threat uh, to their position in the hier hierarchy. Um, and they also envy you a little bit. So uh, I wouldn't, you know, declare uh, that, uh, that you don't care about the hierarchy. Um, but it's also important to understand that uh, people usually care more about their position in the hierarchy than the hierarchy itself. So uh, people often have this mistake of saying, oh, what, what the, does the state do? You know, in 30 years, they won't have money for, uh, for pensions and uh, for retirement funds. Um, and most of the politicians, they don't care about what happens in 30 years because they have a four-year four year term. So uh, they don't care about this problem. They, they care about, uh, you know, uh, how are they going to maximize the, their power um, for the next uh, four or eight years? How do they steal most and so on? So uh, it's a good idea not to be seen as a threat to their position. But otherwise, uh, it's not uh, good to interact with it uh, at all, uh, up to how it's possible. 
so how to do it, what is the positive side of this, you create and nurture, nurture and grow these meaningful relationships with other nodes, uh, you cooperate with people, you can even form teams, but you are not necessarily in a company that has uh, uh, static roles and so on. So, uh, this is something that I called freedom too. So in the beginning, I had a definition of freedom as a way, um, uh, as a non-aggression principle. So that is freedom from, you are free from uh, coercion. Uh, what I'm talking about now is freedom too. So now, now you are, it actually, it's a, it's a funny story uh, from uh, uh, Parallel Police. Um, uh, that we created uh, this space and uh, uh, my experience was more in Bratislava space uh, and there, were, there was no hierarchy, there was no boss of the place. Uh, so people came, they felt free, oh wow, finally I have no boss, no one is telling me to, uh, what to do. And then, they, then many of them, they sat down and said, okay, so what do we do? <laughs> Who's gonna tell us what, what are we going to do? And switching the mindset to, okay, uh, so if no one tells me what to do, I need to figure it uh, for myself. And that's freedom too, that is um, freedom to do something. Um, so uh, freedom too, uh, we call, uh, that there is something that we call uh, the dark forest. So that's this space in cypher fear where things grow and we can, uh, we can uh, interact there, work there and so on. Uh, this is very scary, you know, if, if you tell someone, oh, leave your job, <laughs> don't have a plan and you will just interact with other people and somehow make money, uh, people think that this is, uh, uh, this is crazy talk and they'll probably die of hunger, uh, which I understand, I've been helping people do just this for quite a long time and uh, not many people are successful, they, they freak out and then, then they find another job. Um, also, uh, if you do this, your usual feedback mechanism kind of breaks down, you know, you, you are not moving up or down, uh, you are not getting a raise from someone, you know, there's no boss to tell you, oh, good job, <laughs> you did something right. Um, uh, so your feedback is the value that you create um, and that is what you should seek. It's a mar market feedback mechanism, it's called profit. And what is interesting about profit is that uh, 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 they, the, those they <laughs> in, the, in the hierarchy, uh, they don't like it uh, because it's uh, a feedback mechanism that is independent on them. You know, if you make money somehow, uh, it's not them granting you uh, the positive or negative feedback in a, in a verbal way, but you, ca you can actually do it for yourself. So. Um, uh, when, when you start thinking about this, you're mentally decoupled from the, from the dominance hierarchy. Um, so if you, if you imagine the hierarchy like a tree, uh, uh, when you are kind of moving in the, in the hierarchy, it's, it feels like shaking the tree, you know, you're moving things up and down and uh, 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 kind of interacting with a, with a very simple structure. Uh, with a note first, you have infinite possibilities. So for example, uh, last year I wrote a book, I made a few courses, I started a startup, I uh, helped uh, several people in, in different things. So when you ask me, so Yurai, what do you do? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, tomorrow maybe I'll write a book or an article or write code. I don't know what I do, uh, but I interact with people. I find ways to bring value um, and that gives me infinite possibilities. So I'm not limited by a label, you know, now you are a book author, you know, <laughs> you should do things that book authors uh, do. And, um, uh, and it expands your possibilities, but it's also scary, you know, uh, because now you can't answer like simple questions. So, oh, how do you make a living? I don't know, um, maybe I will do an interest rate arbitrage on some DeFi markets <laughs> uh, and that's how I'll make my money. So, if you are in the process of living this game, uh, first of all, you are building yourself. So you have some intention of doing something and you are creating uh, what you will become. So that's the, that's the first part. 
uh, but you are also discovering yourself. You need to allow things happen to you. You need to be open to these interactions. I don't know if you noticed, but this place is built to open heads. Uh, it's why it's a little bit weird. You know, you come inside, there's weird music, there's the turnstile, no state money, and uh, even the bar is kind of open and you don't know who's, <laughs> who's gonna serve you coffee. And it makes you a little bit uneasy. It opens uh, your mind a little bit. And uh, that is the state of mind uh, that uh, um, creates this, uh, uh, I would say, yeah, allowing mindset. So you, you can say, okay, now I'm too open, whatever. This is weird anyway, so I'm going to listen a little bit about this Bitcoin thing and, uh, uh, and uh, this maybe new, uh, new lifestyle. What you can also do, I like this quote by Kevin Kelly, don't aim to be the best, be the only. Uh, so I will never be the best programmer in the world, not even the best programmer in the language I know most. Um, uh, but I'm still the only, you know, there is uh, the book I wrote, uh, uh, it is the best book, uh, but the reason it is the best book is that it's the only book that writes about <laughs> what I write about, you know. So I'm not trying to, uh, when, when you do this, when you create yourself, when you build yourself, uh, you are combining all these unique things that only you can do, and you are the only, you're not replaceable on the market by anyone else. So uh, that's, uh, that's why the, the book, uh, for example, is uh, very unique because I'm, I'm not trying to compete with uh, the Bitcoin standard or anything like that. They don't write about uh, what I write about. So um, that also uh, relates to the hierarchies. I don't know how much time we have. Uh, I'm slowly wrapping up. Um, but it relates in, a, in a such way that when your role is uh, defined, uh, uh, then, uh, uh, first of all, uh, you start doing things that are not your unique capabilities, you know, because someone buys eight hours of your time and you are programming and then they say, oh, but we need someone to go to the meeting with the customer. But you're a programmer, but okay, they pay for your eight hours. So what you end up doing is you spend uh, usually 80% of your time doing something else that you're good at. <laughs> And that is very, uh, very wasteful of, uh, of your time. So for me, I would rather work only the 20% and then I go chill out. But I know that in the 20%, that's what I'm best in and I'm irreplaceable uh, because I'm the only. <laughs> All right, so uh, in summary, this game is not about persuading some customers to pay with Monero. Also good if you can do that, but uh, won't uh, move you too far. Um, uh, it's not about showing off your graphene Tor ultra paranoid command line setup with Monero. Also nice, geek out, I, I also like to do that. Uh, but if you want to actually use these technologies to uh, bring you more freedom or even step out of the dominance hierarchies, uh, you need to disappear from the radar. Uh, you choose how to do it, so that's the Houdini act in the name of the uh, of the talk, uh, you need to understand them at least enough um, uh, to be able to step out of the game, unless you understand what they see and how they interpret it and what they're going to do with it, uh, you, uh, you cannot do this. Uh, be sure not to threaten them, so that's why crypto anarchists, they usually don't say, oh, we want to get rid of the state. No, we, we just want to live our lives uh, a little bit differently and we don't care about who's the president or uh, whatever, um, and then uh, you are uh, creating value and meaningful business and personal relationships in the cypher sphere or uh, in the dark forest, as we call it. Um, I recommend not wasting time with political discussions and definitely persuading politicians. It's a, it's a total waste of time. Uh, uh, I don't recommend uh, being overly paranoid about everything. You know, there are people who uh, are super paranoid about whatever, clicking a, a cookie checkbox or, uh, you know, showing their IP address and then they'll call Uber on their phone, which is in their name and knows their location. So uh, kind of putting things in perspective. Why am I doing this? Like how exactly is my privacy uh, going to give me more freedom? So, uh, 
uh, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, I wrote uh, a really nice article which I translated to uh, uh, to English. Uh, uh, it's called "Searching for Gamma." If you uh, search for my name and the title, um, it is about uh, the uh, personality of gamma and how to interact. Uh, uh, with gammas when you meet them, how you ac actually recognize uh, this personality type, uh, and if you are a gamma, then how the interaction works between uh, these, uh, uh, these people. They're a little bit weird. Uh, I don't know if you try to uh, go to uh, dinner with 10 libertarians. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, everyone kind of uh, is too free to, uh, to be agreeable, but uh, it's doable. Uh, so, if you if you are interested in stepping out out of the hierarchies, I recommend reading it. I also wrote a short ebook which is called Cypherpunk Visions and Trends, uh, uh, 2023 to 2025. It is about um, uh, what technologies and what life strategies are uh, kind of hip right now. What I would like to see uh, happening, but it's like most of it. Uh, already happened, so different lifestyles like van life, uh, digital nomadism, uh, running home notes, uh, being your own bank, uh, and uh, many other things. Um, I also wrote, so this is the, another unique uh, book, and uh, it is about how you can use the technologies of cryptocurrencies to actually live this kind of lifestyle. It is ba based on experience in Paralnipolis, so here uh, you have seen that you can only pay with uh, crypto, uh, but what many people don't know is we also keep the crypto and we run the whole organization based on this. So how do you run an organization or your life with something super volatile, how you don't go uh, bankrupt and so on. So this is uh, another, I think they have this one on sale also here. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's it, and uh, if you want to ask any questions... <laughs>